I'd like to make a very warm welcome to you all to Farm Focus's first webinar for 2023, Jump On to Jump Ahead. We are thrilled to have you with us joining in, jumping on today, and good on you for taking the time out to upskill, to do more and be more with your Farm Focus, New Zealand's gold standard farm financial management software. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Patty O'Boyle. I'm Farm Focus's Key Relationship Manager, and it's my absolute pleasure tonight to host this session with our presenters, Gay Cowie and Mike Turner. First up, though, I'd like us to take a moment to acknowledge the plight of so many in our rural communities right now. The impacts from Cyclone Gabrielle are very real and considerable, with the loss of loved ones, homes and livelihoods. And all the while, our southern neighbours struggle with drought. Our kind thoughts are certainly with all of those who have been so affected. Just a little housekeeping for tonight. Please pop any questions you have um, during the sessions. If you pop them into the chat function, you'll find that along the top of your screen. Pop your um, question in there and we'll collate them at the end um, to give to keep Mike and Gay on their toes with a couple of questions um, if you need further explanation about something that they've raised during their presentation. Please note as well that we are recording this webinar for further training purposes. And following tonight's session, well, not tonight, but perhaps in the next day or two, you will receive an email from us with a short survey, a copy of this presentation, and a wee thank you gift. When we look at this quote here, which was recently shared with us from a senior agriculture economist, this year, 2023, will most likely favour those with a sharp eye on costs and who work to a budget. Never a truer word spoken, I'm guessing. And tonight we aim to provide you with an informative session of just how you can make the most out of your software, your trusted team, and therefore your farming business. There's no doubt that in our food and fibre sector, there is and will continue to be a lot of challenges, but at the same time, that does present us with opportunities. And it's a well-known fact that an opportunity favours those that are well-placed, well-supported and are confident in their decision-making. Tonight, we are lucky enough to have presenters Gay Cowie and Mike Turner. Gay, an accountant and a farmer, resides in Val Clutha and is a director and partner in Shan Thompson accountancy firm. Mike Turner is a rural banker here in the Wairarapa and at, for ASB Bank. In his past life, Mike was a chartered accountant as well. Uh, these days he dabbles in part-time milk harvesting and is known to share the odd sheep as well. When I asked both Gay and Mike if they would um, join in with this in initiative, it was abundantly clear that they both share similar aspirations for New Zealand farmers as we do here at Farm Focus. That is, the best possible outcomes for our farmers, farm business owners feeling more in control, more confident and more courageous with their financial data and decision making and farm business owners having the very best tools for the job, the required understanding and the best possible support around them. So Gay will get us started. She will, uh, she will lead us through best practice use of farm focus and making the most of your accountant during and at the end of the year. And at the end, she will answer any questions you have sent in through that chat. And just remember, there's no such thing as a dumb question. In fact, you might be asking something that others are still wondering about themselves. We'll then hear from Mike and he will talk about the role of the rural banker and how that's changed and changing and how you and your modern New Zealand farming business can be best placed to make the most of all of that. Again, we'll follow with a short Q&A session. So make sure, pop those questions in for Mike and who knows, we might even have the presenters asking a little bit of each other. That could get interesting. 
Our key objectives tonight are to inform and inspire you all to be better placed to make the most of your software and your team. Because we know from our farmers and from their professionals that that is a very powerful com combination. So let's get started. Let's hear about what you've really jumped on here for. And let's hear from Gay about the role of the accountant and the farmer. Gay. <laughs> Thanks, Patty, for that introduction. And hello, everyone. So as Patty said, today's session is about how to get the most out of your farm-focused software. And part of that equation is about getting your trusted team, that's your accountant, banker, and farm consultant involved at an early stage. As we all know, farming is not for the faint-hearted. And this season seems to be one out of the box for throwing challenges at us, whether it be the weather, and my thoughts go to all those of you dealing with the cleanup after the cyclone, and it's hard to believe that we have drought-like conditions down here in my neck of the woods. Other on-farm challenges this year are reductions in farm gate prices, farm input inflation, and rising interest rates. Everything seems to be getting thrown at us this season. And I want to acknowledge that there's a lot of stress out there in the farming community at the moment. But I see farm focus as a tool to take some of that stress away. Having control of your finances, by having a plan in place with the support of your accountant, banker and farm consultant is a much better place to be in than having your head in the sand. So today I'm going to cover off how and when to involve your accountant and what you as the farmer can do to make the most out of your farm focus. Thanks Gay. Thanks Patty. Thanks Gay. Thanks Patty. Thanks Gay. So the first place to start is with the setup. And I recommend that you get your accountant involved from day one. Make sure your accountant is invited to your farm focus file with organization admin access. Ask your accountant to review the codes you're using to make sure they align with the codes they will use at year end. It's fine to have multiple subcodes. For example, you want to make, want to break down animal health into dog expenses, drenches and dips, horse expenses, etc. But at the year end, your accountant will accumulate these subcodes into one animal health code. But there's no point in having a contracting code if that is not a code that your accountant uses at year end, and they'll just have to spend time reanalyzing items to fit into their coding structure. And we all know that extra time for your accountant is extra time on the bill for you. Your accountant should also check your GST setup for the period end dates and that all your bank accounts have been set up. Farmlands and farm source are set up as connectors. This means your farmland statement will automatically import at the end of each month for you to code. It does pay to check your farm focus file reconciles to your bank account. This is more important when you first convert to farm focus as sometimes there can be a delay from signing up those first signing up to those first transactions coming into the file. And I do recommend once a month just checking that the bank reconciles. This can be done through the balancing tab, under actuals, and having your online banking open at the same time. I will mention this again later when we talk about the accountant's annual report later in my session. It's also a good idea to talk to your accountant about the timing of switching over to Farm Focus. Although I'm probably preaching to the converted, Ideally, this is at the start of the financial year, but if you're part way through a year, you can always ask your accountant or the friendly farm focus customer success team to help you enter and code the earlier part of the year to ensure that you have a full 12 months. This is so much easier for your accountant when they go to prepare your year end financials and better for you when you want to start budgeting in farm focus. GST is another great time to get your accountant involved. GST continues to be one of the tax types where people make the most mistakes. I always suggest to my clients that when they transition to a new software, that we check their first GST return, just to make sure they're off on the right track. Your accountant should be checking that GST is set up correctly on codes, especially any new codes the farmer has made, and that any private portions are set up correctly by the code split rules, and you'll find them under settings and then codes. 
We also like to check that the higher purchase and loan payments are correctly treated. Remember with a higher purchase, you can claim all the GST up front and then there's no GST on the sub subsequent repayments. Everyone is aware that there's no GST on wages and bank fees, but dwellings and vehicles can be a bit tricky. GST is not claimable on costs in relation to employee dwellings, as it is an exempt supply under the long-term residential rental activity rules. So GST can't be claimed on cottage repairs, but you can claim repairs to the woolshed. For owners' dwellings, it can depend on whether you trade as a company, trust or partnership. So again, it pays to ask your accountant and get it right from the start. Vehicle expenses are also a bit of a minefield. They may be 100% private, a 25% business claim if no logbook is kept, or 100% claimable if 100% business related vehicle. Again, pays to get it right from the start. Other expenses which may need some adjustment are phone, internet, electricity, and insurance premiums. I can't emphasize enough, ask your accountant to set these up correctly for you at the start. And of course, there's always the friendly, farm-focused customer success team available to help. And then, of course, the final step of GST returns is finalizing and filing your GST return. The simplest way to do this is through your farm focused software, but you must have all your transactions coded before you can finalize and file. The other option is to file by logging into your MyIR account. We do recommend the first method because by doing it that way, you lock the GST return and you cannot go back and change your coding. It really will have your accountants scratching their heads if the GST return saved in Farm Focus doesn't equal what was filed with the inland revenue. If you do decide to change your coding after filing the GST return, you'll not be able to amend the GST treatment. For example, if you code an amount to animal health and GST is claimed, you can't later code that amount to drawings with no GST claim. Farm Focus may allow you to change the code to drawings, but the GST claim would have to stay on the amount. I would advise highlighting to this to your accountant and they can adjust from their end rather than trying to correct it in the Farm Focus file. Budgets and plans. This is where the rubber really hits the road. And this is where I think you can really start reducing the stress in your business. Farm Focus makes it so easy to plan ahead and you can have multiple versions of those plans if that's what's required for each season. Again, I recommend you ask your accountant to get involved at the planning stage. Many banks request a budget for reporting purposes that has been approved by the bank at the start of the season and doesn't change. So we suggest adding bank to the name of that plan and the date approved by the bank. After that, you can have as many versions as you like but name and date them so you can keep some sort of order. Different plans can be used for different scenarios. For example, milk price fluctuations, options around lambs fattened versus lambs sold for stores, or how a significant plant or vehicle purchase would fit into this year's budget. I do recommend that you ask your accountant to help with adding in any taxation payments and ensuring that interest and principal payments to banks or family members are entered correctly. Checking that opening livestock numbers in the livestock reconciliation module reconcile to what's in your year end financials is another thing to check, and I will mention that again later. And you can also ask your accountant to undertake a does this make sense check. I have several clients who will let me know their plan is ready and farm focus and ask me to review. I'm looking at a comparison between this year and last for income expenses. I'm looking are the tax and principal payments correct? Are drawings reasonable? Then I can ask the critical questions. If drawings last year were $100,000, but the budget only has $50,000, what is the plan to achieve this? And just remember, it's the bottom line that the banker is interested in. What is the cash surplus for the year? And what are the overdraft requirements? And finally, from an accountant's perspective, farm focus is just so useful for tax planning and succession planning. 
As I said at the start, we all know that this season is quite different to last season. And this really hits home when you look at what provisional tax to pay for the current financial year. Just a refresher, terminal tax is the wash-up tax for the last financial year and generally due on the 7th of April. Provisional tax is paid in advance for the current season. Provisional tax is usually paid in three instalments, but if you file your GST on a six monthly basis, then it's two instalments of provisional tax. When you're working out how much provisional tax to pay, there are two methods. The standard method, last year plus 5%, and if you haven't filed your tax return, it's the year before last plus 10%. The other option is to estimate your provisional tax. As soon as you start estimating, you fall into the use of money interest regime, which at the moment is 9.21% on underpayments and 2.31% on overpayments. So will you want to get your estimates as close as possible? Penalties can also be charged if you're way off with your estimates. For many of my clients this year, we've paid the first two instalments based on 2021, and then we will estimate the final instalment. For a June sheep and beef farmer, their final instalment of 2023 provisional tax is due on the 28th of July, 2023, which is after the end of their season. I can pop into their farm focus file and quickly and efficiently prepare an accurate tax estimate based on actual income earned and expenses paid for the year. I use the profit and loss report for this. The same applicability applies to succession planning. We all know that succession planning is a lot easier when you have a profitable farm and having accurate and current data enables better conversations to be had and decisions made. Plans and farm focus can be used to see how payments to the older generation to retire off farm fit into the farm cash flow or it could be additional borrowings to support off farm siblings in business or house purchases. And now I want to look at it from a farmer's perspective. What can you be doing to ensure that your accountant, banker or farm consultant get optimum value from your farm focus software? In the first place to start and finish is the livestock reconciliation. It is like the bedrock of your farm focus file, just like your stock are on your farm. Make sure your opening numbers reconcile to what your accountant finished with last year. Make sure when you're working in plans for next year that the opening stock numbers equal the closing numbers for the season before. Are births and deaths reasonable? Always add in the quantities for livestock purchases and sales. And it's really helpful to have the weights added in as well, as most rural accountants will be preparing farm benchmarking statistics and require detail of livestock weights. Weights are also used in the farm focus economic farm surplus reports and livestock trading reports, and you'll find them under the reports heading. I recommend using any on-farm activities throughout the year as an opportunity to reconcile your livestock numbers or add data into your reconciliation. For example, we always scan our ewes in the first week of July. I get the tallies off my husband to add into my livestock reconciliation at that point in time. And once you've completed your docking or tailing, that is the time to add in the births into your livestock reconciliation. Don't get too tangled up with the aging up process of livestock. If you just remember that they age up on the last day of the year. So it's lambs, 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 then hoggets on the last day. Next year, they start as hoggets. And again, don't forget the farm focus customer success team as they're there to help. From an accountant's perspective, having an accurate livestock reconciliation prepared in farm focus makes our job a lot easier. It's always much better for a farmer to be calculating his deaths and missing than someone sitting in the office. And I know it's where the banks start at when they're looking at performance. So it's just so important to get it right. The invoice scanner is another feature of farm focus that accountants love. 
So I do urge farmers to make the most of it. Having all your invoices saved electronically is life changing. And that is one good thing that has come out of COVID. It's just about all our farm invoices are emailed now. In my house, the invoices are emailed to my husband. He checks them for accuracy as he is doing the, he's the one doing the on-farm spending. And then I upload, pay and code. I almost get grumpy when an invoice comes in the mail and I have to scan it to get it into my software. And just a hint here, please always make sure your invoices are in the correct trading name. So that's Sharon Farming Co Limited, not in the name of Ed Sharon. So gone are the days of files of invoices to be dropped off to the accountants. It's all in your farm focus software. And for my team, that makes our job so much easier if there's been an asset purchased or an unusual payment during the year that we can check on when we're preparing the year-end financials. And there's no worry about where to store seven years of farm invoices as it's all online. And another bonus is that it's so easy to search for invoices. If you want to look up what something cost last year, you can use the search function under completed and type in the name of the supplier you are looking for. This will bring up all last payments with PIP invoices attached. And finally, my final suggestion for really getting the most out of your farm focus software is about using the invoice matching facility. Once your invoices are added into farm focus, make sure they are matched to the payment made or the money banked. Keep an eye on the left hand side of the needs action screen. These are the invoices that have not yet been matched with a payment made or money received. This is really important at year end. The unmatched invoices flow, flow through to a closing accounts receivables and payables report. And that's money owed to you or by you at the end of the year. Accountants call these debtors and creditors and they form part of the accrual accounting process to prepare your year end financials. So before your accountant dives into your farm focus file to start preparing your financials, have a quick review of the unmatched invoices on the left hand side. Anything that has a date older than one month before the end of your financial year should be looked at. And another hint, once you've filed the final GST return for the year, usually 31 May or 30 June, open up the accountant's annual report under reports, select accrual view and the right financial year and then click apply. This is the report that your accountant will use to prepare your financials. On section one, check that there are no uncoded transactions and the bank balances balance to your online banking. Use the drop down arrow to select the section four, analysis by code, and have a quick review of the coding for the year. If you spot any errors, make a note for your accountant to amend. Section 5B is the closing accounts receivables and payables. This comes from the unmatched transactions and should be all the items that were owed by you or owed to you at the end of the year. And finally, review section six, the livestock reconciliation. Are births and deaths correct? Are the year end numbers correct? As I said, better for you, the farmer to be doing this than the accountant. So just in summary, to accurate and timely data means less stress. Having a budget or a plan means less stress. Understanding your financial position means less stress and that you can make better decisions going forward. And you'll have a happy banker and a happy accountant. So that's it for me. Thank you. And I'm very happy to take any questions. Thank you, Gay. Thank you very, very much for your presentation there. Now, um, we have got one question, um, and it's in regards to someone that's uh, making use of Farm IQ, um, but they're using Farm Focus to reconcile their livestock. Can Focus talk back to Farm IQ with regards to stock rec? Um, are you happy to answer this, Gay, or would you prefer that I attempt I think, to? I think you should answer that one, Patty. <laughs> thanks for that. So thanks for your question, Wallace. Um, 
So at this stage, no, um, Focus doesn't talk back to Farm IQ, but as you can imagine, um, with all the different software options um, in in the farming sector, that those greater integrations are something that we all um, seek, including ourselves as farmers and um, as as businesses. So at this stage, they don't, um, but watch this space. Um, all those sorts of integrations are going to make a big difference um, to, to our businesses. We had a question earlier, Gay, um, about how to deal with the cyclone relief payment from MPI. Um, can you just remind us what the response to that was for now? Yeah, that, that was an interesting one um, because that's just new out that payment yesterday or today. Um, I had a quick look on the MPI website and Beef and Lamb and nowhere talks about the GST and income tax treatment. I suspect that um, you'll have to return it for GST because they do ask for your GST number. And I suspect it will be like some of the COVID payments where they say it's non-taxable, but then you can't claim as a deduction the things that you spend it on. But um, what I said this afternoon in a session this afternoon is I will clarify that and get that information to Patty so that that can go out with your email after this webinar. I will find out. Thank, thank you, Gay. Um, and we will um, gladly pass that information on to all those that have been in attendance and, and to all Farm Focus subscribers, actually, so they know, you know where they stand. Um, this is great. Tonight we're a lot more engaged with our questions, and we've got a question from... Kelly, and um, again, you might be able to answer this or I could, Gay, but I'll, I'll let you decide. Can you email an alliance invoice to Farm Focus or will it read it as money due to come out instead of money due in, as this is what happened to me when I tried doing it? Okay, Patty, again, sorry, I'm throwing that one at you. Yep, that's, that's a fine. Bit, um, specific for me. That's fine. I'm happy to take this one. I would have to describe a Silver Fern Farms invoice, though, because that is my um, preferred who we supply. Um, but um, so I can email um, the um, kill sheet or payment sheet um, directly into Farm Focus, and it can go through the invoice scanner. Initially, it does um, read it as money to come out and it's a matter of changing the negative sign um, or removing the negative sign so um, it, it recognize, recognizes it as actually income come in and again we can train the invoice scanner to read the really important details of that um, that invoice um, whether it's the um, stock class um, that we want the invoice scanner to always go looking for or the quantity so we can train the scanner to bring across the information that's going to be helpful for our management accounting during the year. So thanks for your question, Kelly. I've got another question for you, Gay, but I might leave it till at the end when we have that combined Q&A session, because I know Mike will be out there and he'll be dying to get on with his presentation. So Mike, are you there? Yes, I am, Patty. There we are, Mike. Good to see you. And I'm going to turn off my camera, Mike, and let you have the floor. Thank you, Patty. Uh, yeah, again, welcome everybody here. Uh, thanks for jumping on and making this um, a priority for you. Um, it's going to be, a, it's been a challenging year so far, and it's probably not going to get a great deal easier the way it's looking. Um, with the wet in the east and up north and certainly here yeah, the dry down south at the moment. However, we've seen it time again that opportunity favours the prepared. Um, in my role, we see it more and more, um, the more and more benefits coming through from the farmers working with the accountants and or consultants um, to get this data up to date and accurate. And um, it, it, look, it helps us make faster faster decisions, which yeah, I guess we've been accused of being a bit slower at times because of overburdening regulations, but yeah, help us make the job faster. Um, so for following on from Gay's um, presentation there, the key themes we've got really is accurate and timely, clarity, 
and stress and uh, how you can actually reduce that. Um, yeah, so the use of farm focus as a platform within your business team, um, it, it's so important and it's playing a bigger part more than ever as the seasons and conditions are changing at such a rapid pace. It allows your business team to interactively share and update vital information, such as your cash flow requirements for the current year, budgeting for the following year, scenario testing for opportunities or changes in policy, uh, and of course, tax planning. Um, this data needs to be dynamic, up to date and realistic, certainly in the changing environment. Um, between everyone us, of us in the team there, we all use the information in a, in a different capacity um, and we all use that data and use that to base our decisions on, um, ultimately with the outcome being a profitable business with a clear direction for the, for the farmer. Right, so probably without stating the obvious, bankers facilitate finance. Um, this can range from trading and working cap capital accounts, uh, which is currently well, known as an overdraft. Um, there's also term extension, um, term or term lending for expansion, for development, for succession, uh, for larger capital purchases, or even off-farm investment. Um, at least once a year, every rural business has to have an annual review. At which point, we have this. Um, it's risk rated. Um, it's a um, reserve bank regulation. Um, now, the higher the risk, the higher the capital the bank has to hold, and this is over and above the reserve bank minimum. Um, therefore, this slows into risk margin, which finally slows right into um, the all-up rate that you'll be getting charged. So within the credit process, um, whether it's an existing customer with an annual review, whether it's an existing customer with um, looking to do something different or bigger or better or smaller um, or, or a new to bank, we fundamentally look at these um, the five C's of credit. Now, every bank's probably got their own different version, um, but sort of ours are as follows. Um, there's character, which is basically the performance and financial history, experience, understanding of drivers within the business, and the ability of the individual or the business itself to understand and mitigate the risk. Um, then there's capacity, which is basically the cash flow. How much biz how much cash does this business generate um, to be able to service and repay its existing debt as well as trade and fulfill the goals that they've got set in place. Um, the collateral, basically the security, which is land, stock, um, residential housing in some cases. Um, capital, basically that's the portion of the business that the owners actually own. Um, and conditions, and these usually are factors that may affect the ability of trade um, and service and commitments, and are normally external factors um, outside the control. Um, that's the seasonal or locational. Uh, now, the reason why this is important is by having a good, sound budgeting base and cash flow and monitoring system in place, you are essentially ticking off two of the top two boxes, being character, which is understanding the drivers of your business and understanding the risks and being able to mitigate it, and obviously the capacity, which as Gay alluded to before, the bottom line's our focus and that's our key. So yeah, with that up-to-date reliable data, it allows planning by all the parties, and it's yeah, again particularly relevant in the current environment. Being forewarned is being prepared, and it takes away some stress of running a business by providing absolute clarity. Um, it also helps clearly articulating a scenario or a change in policy, and again, that flows into helping the bank make a faster decision. Um, lastly, in there, banks don't like surprises. Um, we would rather receive a phone call from you than have to make one. Um, don't, behind, don't hide behind an issue. Tackle it proactively and head on as it most likely won't go away itself. So I guess yeah, the role of a banker has changed and there's probably been more change in the last five years than there has in the previous 15. Um, like any facet of business in this country, unfortunately, regulations are increasing. Um, we've had the invent of AML, um, that's not going away, and certainly adds a bit of extra time there. 
We've got the Triple CFA, which is the Consumers Credit Contract Financial Act. Um, whilst this is more specific to consumer lending, it does still flow into the rural side of it. Um, and also a couple of years ago, the Royal Commission put a spotlight on the rural-based lending um, and it required a lot more resilience within the industry. And this was to be done basically by debt repay and deleveraging deleveraging the businesses that were in there. Um, also, banks would move from the point of an automatic interest only expectation um, and that had been around for a generation if not two. Uh, we're also relying on an independent source of information uh, largely from an accountant or a consultant which provides an arm's length um, source of independence so again yeah there's no blurring of the bank setting a budget and then they're not making it in all sorts of trouble. So yeah we no longer by and large rely on assumptions whilst the history of a business is still very important uh, and it still helps provide a guide into the future, um, critical analysis and up and ongoing monitoring is still required as the industry keeps changing and different obstacles keep getting put up. Guys, um, spoke about this as well. Um, I will only reiterate here because to me it's one of the it's the fundamentals, um, more so in a sheep and beef farming business. Um, the livestock rec form, rec reconciliation forms the basis of the year's income, which flows into available cash for all the farming operations. It, it, it just needs to be right, and it should at the bare minimum match up to the accountant's opening figures. If it doesn't, you'll need to get the, the accountant or the consultant to get it sorted right from the start. At the beginning of the year when the budgets are set, there's assumptions made based on historical basis. For example, your lambing percentages, the dry culls and deaths you may have there, um, right through to sort of weaning weights. Um, they obviously clearly start with an expectation of where it could be or should be, but things change. Um, and there's key times, again reiterating what Gay said, there's key times within the year um, that actual input overriding some assumptions helps um, push out that um, projected actual picture. Uh, be it scanning, docking, sharing tallies, um, the more actual stuff that's in there, the more clarity it's going to provide at the other end. Um, we all know livestock is very dynamic and it continues to evolve. The seasons change. The market's changed. So close consideration in the timings of sales, um, it, it, yeah, it really needs to be adhered to. Um, for instance, up here in the Wairapa, we're having an extremely growthy summer. Um, therefore, there's a heck of a lot more um, stock retention than we normally see this time of year, um, which means there's no cash being received for that stock, but they're still sitting in the paddock. So the budget really needs to reflect that. You don't want you don't want actuals to overlap a figure, and yeah, you, you miss some sales that are in there, and that upsets the the projected cash flow. Um, and I've seen a number of um, distressed people looking at that. And when you work out that there's a thousand names that are still in the system that need to be accounted for, it's, it's quite a good story. Um, conversely, though, in the dry season, you don't want to underlap it. You don't want to Sell the have the thousand lambs that should have gone in January gone in December and then still in the budget out in December to receive because that uh, doesn't work out that well. Um, so it, do, it just it does need to resolve um, and look it, it provides clarity and it reduces stress. Again, that those those keys there. Right, yeah, so. The ongoing revision is absolute key. Um, it removes any ambiguity and it can reduce the stress by providing the clear and decisive part in the following months. Seasons change and stuff happens. Work with as well as actual, current or known to feed into the future planning. The dairy forecaster and farm focus um, updated regularly with Fonterra and the other major companies in there. That helps feed into what income could be a, should be coming in for the for for a dairy business. Um, notwithstanding production, how the season's going? Was it a good spring? Was it a um, tougher spring? And what 
effect that has to production throughout the rest of the year. Um, I guess very topical now um, are interest rates. The amount of traction the interest rate rises have got is staggering, um, and the impact that's having on cash flow, um, particularly over 12 months, is, is huge. It's massive. Um, so, yeah, it, it just needs to be updated as as the OCR lifts and interest rate rises. It doesn't hurt to update that in the budget for the future month. Um, so, this, yeah, this flows into actually giving us a clear and accurate picture of what the overdraft limits are, um, what you may need as an extension, uh, and it certainly helps us with any interest only request. Uh, and it also will help the accountant Gay and her people um, in tax revisions. Uh, again, in a year where a lot of tax has been paid in the last couple of years, there's a, been a lot of cost pressure on this year. Um, prices are coming down, costs are going right up, and coupled with interest. Uh, yeah, tax revision is going to be quite helpful if you're talking cash flow out the other end. Uh, so, yeah, probably just the budgets and cash flows aren't at all just to see how bad things are. We have tough years, but we also have good years. It's, that's why we do it. Um, and, having a, and having that plan in the future is crucial. In the better years, they can highlight surpluses, which provide options, be it on-farm development or reinvestment, capital plant replacement. After a couple of good years, there's been a few extra shiny things floating around in the paddock. Another couple of tough years, they're going to wear out, so they will need to be replaced at some point. Um, there's off-farm diversification, there's debt repayment, um, and also, yeah, it's that tax planning, understanding if you need to be paying a bit more. Uh, so I guess, yeah, the use of farm focus um, with your accountant helps provide clarity to your lives, the accountant's lives and the bank's lives, and it also takes away the stress of the unknown. Um, the use of the reliable, accurate and realistic information actually allows us to assess and make decisions a heck of a lot faster and there's no need to to and fro request with the accountant. So, yeah, I think, the, yeah, the key is clear, concise and complete and we'll, the banks will start moving fast. Awesome. Being game ready. I love it, Mike. Thank you so much for your presentation. Now, we haven't got any new questions that I can see there, unless anyone's um, typing away. If I gave you a few seconds, if anybody's got a specific question for Mike, otherwise I might fire a couple at him that I've got myself here. Okay, well, while... Um, people are stopping being shy, Mike, I'll, I'll throw a couple of you. Ideally, how often would you as a banker like to have your client's plan updated? Yeah, I would say at an extreme bare minimum, it would be at the end of each GST period, so at least two monthly. Um, at the end of each month with the reconciled bank statements, that, that would be ideal or at any point there's a major um, event on farm that's gone on, be it docking, obtaining sharing tallies, um, yeah, those, those sort of things. So, yeah, once a month would be perfect. Awesome. Thank you for that. And also in the current climate, how is the bank feeling about dropping principal repayments and moving to interest only? And... And, and what do you need from your clients to make that call? Yeah, I guess the, the banks aren't scared of interest only. Um, it's, it's time, yeah, yeah you basically you can't get blood out of a stone, but yeah, for us to make a call, we would, I guess, fundamentally look at what has happened in the past, has debt repayment occurred willingly and, um, lovingly um and also yeah um i guess yeah understanding what those cash flows are going to look like into the next 12 18 months is uh is going to be important because if there's appears that there may be a surplus in there the request might be a bit tougher to get through um however yeah like i say you can't get blood out of the stone there's no point going deeper and deeper into overdraft 
long term because no one really wins out of that. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Mike. I'm wondering if there's any final questions or comments out there. No. Um, well, I've got one for um, Gay actually. Um, thinking back to her presentation, if you're there, Gay, what does a well organised database mean to an accountant? What difference does it make to you and your team? Uh, okay, look, I, that's a really good question, and it, and it's a question I like to have. I like to have that conversation with my clients. You know, I'm really prepared for them to say, "What can I do to make your job easier?" And therefore, um, and my accounting bill. Um, less or not not increase as much and so it's a good conversation to have with your accountant um having um obviously having it reconciled to the bank having a livestock reconciliation is probably the biggest thing i can say will make your accountant's job easier the more times i have to go back to the client and ask for information the more times i have to put the file down and pick it back up that's more time more time on the clock and that's more more accounting fees so Having everything there for your accountant when they start, um, having your invoices attached, and having a balanced livestock reconciliation is is just huge. It, it makes my team smile. <laughs> oh, that's great. We want to make our accountant smile, and we obviously <laughs> want to make our banker smile and give us the answer we're looking for. <laughs> so um, it's been um, fantastic having you both on tonight. Um, if there aren't any other further questions or comments, um, I guess just in conclusion, I think what um, Mike and Gay have done for us is really reinforce the different roles that are available to support the farmer and the farming business. Um, so whether it's the accountant, the banker or the farm consultant. And remember those that are in your trusted team are those who really want to help you to make your farming business go and grow. So um, for those of you that have tuned in tonight, we've got a wee thank you gift. I think I um, referred to it earlier in the session, but um, after attending today's session, we'll be forwarding you a code, SAVE300. So it's an exclusive offer for those of you on the webinar. Um, while this is for new customers, which may be some of you, or as a current subscriber, you could gift this code as many times as you like to anyone you think would benefit from our gold standard software farm focus. Um, and with that value of $300, that exclusive offer is valid for three months until the end of May. And the, the code to use um, for anyone signing up is SAVE300. Now we've just got a We Resources page. So there's the, um, the slide about that offer. Um, which we'll be sending out to you in that follow-up email. And some uh, other resources that might be helpful, the Help Centre Topics, um, a great library of Help Centre Topics. Um, some people like to ring in and speak to some people, some have, people are happy to have a look for themselves. Our online loan training, um, there's a number of webinar uh, and training videos available there for specific functions um, around the farm focus software and and just always to remember that rural support trust is there and therefore our rural communities um, and that's their website and uh, phone number if you or anyone else you know needs their help um a few thank yous before we we close for the evening um i'd especially like to thank our two presenters tonight gay and mike um for the time that they've spent preparing for today and tonight um and for their time today and then the difference that they are likely to have made in all of our tomorrows so thank you very sincerely gay and mike um, thank you to our participants who have jumped on to jump ahead uh, we are confident and trust that you've benefited from hearing such practical, credible, authentic rural leaders such as Gay and Mike, and that they have inspired you to do more and be more with your software and your farm focused team. And finally, thanks to those behind the scenes who have created, supported and offered technical assistance to make tonight and today's earlier session run smoothly as possible. So thank you all very much. Have a good night and go well. See you another time. Good night.